Welcome back to another set of tips and tricks and today it's NEMA 2000 day. We just got done showing you the Helix install. Next we're going to do the same thing with our Solix or Onyx series unit. Uh, you'll need a NEMA 2000 uh, starter kit. You'll need an interface cable to go to your, to your Yamaha or whatever brand of outboard you run. Uh, to, if it is a NEMA 2000 compatible motor. Um, not all outboards are NEMA 2000 compatible. Older motors, you're not going to have that technology available. Plus you will also need one NEMA 2000 cable, pigtail cable from your unit to your backbone. Basically you're going to have uh, a T like this that you're going to hook on to your to your backbone that you run in the boat and I've already got pre-rigged in the boat and then you'll have a NEMA 2000 cable you hook this cable to the T you hook the other end to the back of the the Solix unit and I'll show you how all that's done let's jump in here get under the console and show you how it's done okay if you watched our Humminbird Helix series we had our NEMA 2000 backbone cable which is this cable right here this is nice on a Skeeter because uh, actually they got it run. I found out, I read the cable number, it is a NEMA 2000 cable and I can connect to it to get NEMA 2000 data. So all I need to do is add a T here. This one is actually going to my Helix black box with uh, the NEMA 2000 with the Solix, all we have to do is hook a regular cable to this end. Um, what I've done is I've run from my Solix, if you can look at my finger right here, this is where the NEMA 2000 cable is going to connect on the back of the Solix here, which is right here. I've connected the NEMA 2000 right here which is our second one from the left side. I've got it run in to my console here. This is my NEMA 2000 extension cable. I'm going to run it down to where I'm going to connect it to the T. So run it from your unit. This, this end is going to connect into my T, which is I'm going to run down here underneath the dash and I'll show so you So we've how got that. our other end of our NEMA 2000 cable. What we're going to do is connect that up here. You connect that to the T here, and then you'll need to tighten that up. And since the Skeeter FX series boat has NEMA 2000, already I just need to find the pins put that back in and that'll be my gauge my Skeeter gauges I'll put that up underneath there Put our cover back on. And we're ready to NEMA 2000. The next big step is coming to your unit and getting it set up. With the Solix being a direct connect to NEMA 2000, not needing a black box, there's going to be other features that you can do. You hit your menu, you want to come to views, and you have instrumentation views, or you could create a new view. Let's just see what we can do with a new view here real quick. Um, you can put gauges there, and you could put mapping. So. That would be cool. That would be a cool view to have. We'll save that. 
but we're going to jump over here just to the to one of the preset instrument views. When you come to your screen, you're going to see the data. The miles per hour is going to come from the Solix GPS. We'll turn our key on to, to activate the motor. See what we got? 93.3 hours. We got 14.7 volts up here. Shows voltage, trim tabs, fuel economy is going to be this bar. Speed over ground, which is going to be here. We're going to have to change that because this boat will do more than 50 mile an hour. Uh, fuel percentage. Uh, your fuel rate, trim tabs, next waypoint, engine temperature, and RPMs. So, one of the things you can do with the Solix is there's a customization. We can edit the instrument. Say we want to come up here and we really don't need next waypoint. I'm going to come over here to Vessel, and I'm going to scroll down. I want to do trip log today. That's, that's something that would be really cool to have. Is how long you've been, how many, how long distance you've traveled, and the average mile an hour is all going to be there. Um, we're going to come down here to trim tabs. We don't have trim tabs, but we do have trim on this unit. Uh, that should probably be under engine. There's our trim. That's our trim percentage. We got one engine that's showing 85 percent. Let's see if that works. That's showing the percentage of trim. That's pretty cool. I kind of like that. Um, well, one of the things, uh, I get voltage in other places, but uh, water temperature would be something that would be important to me. Uh, temperature, engine one, there's engine temperature. Come down here. Another thing would be uh, engine oil pressure. And I've seen it down here under oil pressure. I'm gonna give that a try. There's a lot of customization. You can come down here to your edit your instrument. It's going to come down here to speed over ground. This is how fast you're going. But it's only got a 0 to 50. Come up here to data limits and we're going to go down here to 0 to 100. Now we're at 0 to 100 and you can actually set a warning if you say you're uh, running at nighttime speed limits or you have a maximum speed that you want to run or fuel economy wise you may say I run better at 50 and I want to kind of stay around that you can quickly set that there it's customizable up to you is uh, this warning limit here but it's going to, that's something that you can play with um, fuel rate fuel percentage come down here Let's see data type. Vessel data. There's all kinds of multitudes of things and you can add additional sensors, but that's going to give you the gist of this. That's basically how you can set this up and customize it. Now let's go back and we're going to come over here to our last one, our mapping and gauge view. Um, and see what we can do. You can do um, change our data type. There's speed over ground. Um, that's our speed. This is our heading. Um, with engine, We can do our temperature, our engine temperature, and our RP and our speed. Go there. I'm not as much worried about heading, but uh, 
come over here. Um, fuel. There we go. Go total fuel. And then we can go up here and I'm going to do fuel economy above it. Fuel, and then we'll do fuel rate. So now you have your gauges and your map all here together. If you want to go down to map, you can zoom in on your map down there. And you got gauges and mapping together. That's one of the cool things of the Solix is there's a lot more customization available. Uh, this thing's got a lot of things you can do. It's simple and easy to hook up. You just have to have a backbone, an interface cable, and connect that directly to the uh, to the unit. It's going to cost you a few less dollars. But uh, that's pretty much the Solix uh, NEMA 2000 install. Um, thanks. I hope that helped you learn a little bit more about the Solix and NEMA 2000 and how to set it up and how to get started with it. It's another product that's included in the Humminbird unit that allows you to do more and get more out of your Humminbird fish finders. Uh, it's a simple, easy installation. Uh, didn't take me long to do it. And it allows me to get a lot more stuff on my, on my Humminbird. It is networkable and shareable to the bow units through the Ethernet network of a Humminbird Solix or Onyx series. Thank you for tuning in to another set of tips and tricks. Tune in next time as we go more in depth about these awesome products from my sponsors that allow you to do more, get more, and enjoy more time on the water. Thank you and have a great day.